Hey everyone, Shark here with another 1v1 on some Wa for you today, this time between two top 10 players. And I picked this one because I think it gives you some really good perspective, not just on how to approach some Wa, but also how USF can counter very vehicle heavy DAC play. Uh, playing as the Axis, we have Jeslin coming from Spain, who's a number seven ranked DAC player, and he's going to use the Italian Infantry Battle Group. And then playing as the allies, we have Reekly from Lithuania, the number three ranked USF player, using the Special Operations Battle Group. One note, based on feedback from some of the viewers, I'm going to try to maintain the default map angle where possible or when there's not a lot of action going on. And then I'm going to go back to rotating to show the breadth of some more wide range engagements. Let me know what you think down in the comments if you get a chance. Thanks for watching. And uh, with that, we're going to roll on to the match. All right, everyone. So what we got here is Jeslin playing the DAC on the east side of the map. So right now at the top of the screen, we got Reekly playing the Americans, uh, immediately going for the Special Operations Battle Group and getting a weasel out. Although uh, it's sitting in his spawn, which is interesting. Um, he's got an engineer being built as well, and, and then the scout. So he'll have a lot of early capping power, but maybe, maybe be a little limited on combat power. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Jeselin going for a second squad of Panzer Pioneers, and uh, Krod shoots in as well. Alright, Reekly getting the barracks out. So, uh, I've casted this a couple of times. I'm really interested in seeing how these guys play this, especially the DAC. Uh, I really struggle with DAC on this map, uh, because I think... You know, these kind of choke points or pathing limiting points coming out of base and on the flank can sometimes really inhibit vehicle play and force you into traps. So, uh, so we'll see how these guys manage it. Uh, Reekly going for special operations. Uh, interesting to see how he plays this out. If he, I doubt he'll stall for commandos now that he's got a barracks out. Uh, but that is an option early. Jeslin now getting a half track out. So going for a fairly motorized approach early. I think makes sense. First rifle squad coming out for Reekly now. Scouts capping aggressively through the center, uh, letting the engineer and the weasel cap on the flank. And both sides kind of avoiding contact for now. I'm, I kind of wonder what Reekly's doing with this weasel here. Oh, maybe he's... Yep, he's waiting for the MG to build. Okay, that makes sense, because he sees the Panzer Pioneers here. And then this indicator lets him know there's a vehicle nearby. So first engagement here. And the weasel's going to back up. Yeah, the weasel's not going to win that one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the half-track. Meanwhile, a squad of scouts here in the building. Uh, we'll try to chip away, and actually do a pretty good job chipping away at the crowd shoots in here. And here we go. Weasel. Wow, really getting chunked down considerably by the 250. 250's frontal armor really protecting it from the weasel. So the weasel can back up all the way to the base here, and rely on the base uh, MGs for defense. Uh, it's going to heal just outside of sight range, while the 250 uh, decaps this fuel. Now rifles on the flank, and I think uh, he's teching grenades. So uh, I think Reekly's going to push this. Uh, weasel with the second rifle squad. Right. Prevent the cap here, and then use the grenades to chunk down this 250. And I think Jeselin suspects it, because he backs the 250 out of there. Another rifle squad on the flank. And, and Reekly, he's got him pushing out all the way, because he really wants to get an AT grenade off on this 250. Crowd shoots are now coming in to scout for the 250. Provided some cover. Oh, here comes the sticky. All right, 250 goes down. Now two rifles on the pioneers. The flame upgrade not going to do any extra damage here in this open field. Fans are going to deers and a crowd shoots and trying to help. And instantly the weasel and the rifles focus the crowd shoots in. Rifles elect to retreat here. While the other squad advances. And Reekly's gonna win that engagement. 
In the meantime, Panzer Pioneer is capping up the center VP, but now Reekly using his scouts to cap the fuel cutoff here. And engineers to capture on the flank. So good awareness across the map, both sides counter capping in the middle of an engagement. Crowd shoots and moves up to pretend, uh, prevent the full cap of the fuel point, but it has to back off because it is taking a lot of damage from these scouts. And Reekly already going for the healing and then the infantry support center. So likely he's going to continue to play with infantry. Meanwhile, Panzer Jaeger's on the field for Jezelen. Potentially worried about the ant, uh, the light vehicles from the U.S. And definitely trying to knock out the weasel. I don't think it'll last long against Panzer Jaegers. Grenade on the church. Good timing. Chunks away a lot of health on the Panzer Pioneers, but doesn't drop any models. And the rifles are going to retreat here to not drop models. While the, uh, the other rifle squad comes out. Captain now on the field as well. Jeslin's got enough fuel now for the uh, support upgrade. Rifles and Panzer Pioneers trading shots between the church. And DPS with Panzer Pioneers dropping, and so they're going to back out of the church here. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the map, engineers were in a good spot against the Panzer Pioneers, but not with the crowd choosing, so they're going to retreat and honestly probably take a fair amount of damage. Oh no, the crowd choosing is going to focus on capping instead. Now, Weasel on the flank, capping the munitions point and repairing as it does so. I love that feature of the Weasel. Ooh, mine, Panzer Pioneers, down to two models and have lost a lot of health. Be interested to see if Jezelin keeps them here at the risk of getting run down by some other element. Rifles pushing on the crotch shoots and it'll get the cap off and then back up. Now Reekly retaking the center. <clears throat> Jezelin counter capping in the south. He's got his Panzer Jaegers on hold fire, so I, he's definitely going to look for that weasel. Which is actually repairing nearby. Motor pool on the way out for Reekly. Crowd shoots and taking a little bit of damage from the rifles, but not a ton. Weasel still doesn't see the Panzer Jaegers. Now he does. Ooh, two shots hit, but the Weasel is able to back away before it gets knocked out. Now Reekly using his scouts and his rifles on the north side of the map to try to counter cap. Rifles challenging Panzer Jaegers, and then also Panzer Pioneers on the cutoff in the center. Panzer Grenadiers moving up to help. Grenade a uh, little early for the retreat path of Panzer Jaegers, and Panzer Pioneers dodge relatively easily. Jezelin unlocking the Guasatori and calling them in. By the way, if you guys haven't seen Tightrope's Guasatori music video, highly recommend. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty hilarious, especially with his uh, his accent. Panzer Grenadiers just sparring with a captain uh, from one garrison to another. Rifles? I think they're going to go capture this VP and try to mass up with another rifle squad. Rifles challenging the crotch and they get the, the decap off on this fuel point again. Jezelin really hurting for fuel. Mine's going down on the bridge here. Lost the are going to come out and challenge rifles, and honestly, they should have no problem with this engagement once they close the distance. Now, flak track on the field for Jezelin. Riflemen immediately retreat. Both squads. I think is wise. Now, a Greyhound out to reinforce the Weasel. He still hasn't seen. Now, he'll have seen a flak track. Captain's going to retreat here, but still at risk if the flak track pushes. Flak track not going to pursue further. Weasel sparring with the crowd shoots in the north, preventing Jesselin from recapping his fuel. Now the Greyhound will come after the flak track. Pack 38 called onto the field for Jesselin now as well. Weasel taking a little bit of damage from the base machine gun. We'll be able to get in and start capping up this fuel. Crowd shoots and will challenge again. 
Oh man, but the vetted up weasel is gonna burn up this crowd chasing. Now with the AT gun in the rear, I don't think he sees it. Crowd chasing using its stationary ability to spot. Pack 38 sets up, but the weasel wisely backs off before the AT gun can get the shot off. AT gun out for Reekly now as well. Scouts and Panzer spar on the east side of the map, while in the center, Guasatori and Panzer Pioneers fight with a uh, Greyhound. The Weasel doesn't want to get caught up here in the north, especially with Panzer Jaegers uh, in this half track. Yeah, that mobile, it's essentially mobile AT vehicle. I really like it. Reekly going for BARs. And yeah, they have to immediately bail out because of the flamethrower. Oh, good timing on the grenade. But it does no damage to the pioneers who get out of the building in time. A T gun chips away at the 250. Shot from the ground will kill it. Guastatori in close against rifles. Captain and Greyhound in support. I think both sides are gonna have to end up retreating here. Wow, the rifles get whittled down very, very quickly. They're able to retreat only because the Greyhound knocks the Guastatori down to two models. Panzer Jaegers in the building, they're going to try to get shots off on the Weasel, but they are getting chunked down as well. And they need to retreat. AT gun in the back, though, could do a lot of work to this Weasel. Oh, first shot whiffs. Panzer Jaeger takes a shot. AT gun whiffs again, and so the Weasel will get away. Blacktrack suppressing rifles on the opposite side of the map. Jeslin, good control across the map. Oh, Greyhound gets smoked by the AT gun. Jeslin, though, doing a really good job of capping on the corners here in the middle of all these engagements, so really impressive. And he's got half of the map back. He really needs that fuel income. Another Greyhound out for Reekly. The Scouts in green cover versus Pantry Eggers in yellow cover. I think this is probably going to be a really RNG heavy engagement here. Now Jeslin investing in a med truck. Meanwhile, on the upside of the map, the captain trying to decap that fuel will have to back off between the crotches and the flak truck. Weasel pushes. Panzer Pioneers take some damage but don't go down. But now the flak track potentially pursue this weasel. And the weasel wisely going to retreat on the flank here. The rifle's now capping up the center. And the scouts win the engagement in the south and are going to retake this munitions point. Lost. Now you see Jeslin building up some forces here in the center, using the med truck to reinforce and heal on the way out of his base. Guastatori come in. Pushing against two rifle squads, the flamethrower allows them to deal in cover. But they take a lot of damage from these BARs very shortly. Greyhound on the flank is going to get knocked out by these Panzer Jaegers. Good placement. Grenade here on the Glossatory. Chunks them down quite a bit, and these rifles are going to win this engagement here. Black Track, in position in the rear, suppresses one squad. And so Jezelin will, will be able to push the rifles off as the Guasatori retreat. AT gun coming up now. Gets a shot off on the flak, but whiffs. And the flak will back off. Here comes the med truck, using the sight blocker here to keep the AT gun from getting another shot off. And while Reekly getting a second AT gun out. Now the weasel still alive at Vet 2, capping and repairing that fuel cutoff. So Reekly doing a great job keeping the pressure on. Here we go. Scouts challenging the crotches and the tracer ability doing a little bit of extra damage. And then in the center, here come the Americans trying to push off the DAC kind of reinforcement position. Med truck is forced to displace. Another squad of Glossatori on the field. Oh, the captain hauls in artillery on the med truck location. That'll allow the rifle squads to continue to push. The Glossatori come out, but at partial health. Trying to repair or uh, heal based off of this med truck, and they may be forced back. Black track shows up in time to start suppressing, and the rifle squads are forced to retreat. AT gun too far to the rear to do anything about it. 
Captain and other rifle squad will continue to advance. AT gun up on the flank to help protect them from the flak truck. This squad, Satori squad, very weak. Oh, first AT gun shot whiffs. But the flak truck is forced to move. That now it takes a shot. Panzer Pioneer is at risk of going down here. Med truck takes a hit. And actually, oh, Pioneers go down. Med truck grabs the AT gun to move it out of the way. The second squad of Glossatori here. They're going to challenge the AT gun. Taking a lot of rifle fire, but they're pretty hardy infantry. They get into green cover. Here's the grenade to force them out of cover. Takes away a lot of health. Ooh, flak track knocked out by the double AT guns. Glossatori do a lot of damage, but they're going to... The oh, whole grenade on retreat path does some additional damage. They're being focused down. But the last model will escape, supported by the crowd just in the Panzer Grenadiers. Now Assault Grenadiers caught out onto the field with a half track as well. Lost the Tory at partial health, moving in to reinforce. Now once they get down to, you know, when they, they have two flamethrowers, once they get down to only a couple of models, they actually lose a lot of DPS against units that aren't in cover. Because they're, they're down to, you know, in this case, three models, only a single SMG. Ooh. Panzer Pioneers knocked out by Engineers. I think there was a Satchel chart, actually, in the south. Assault Grenadiers and a 250 are going to chase this rifle squad. Jeselin's finally recovered his fuel up here. And is pushing to gain control of the south. These Assault Grenadiers just not doing a ton of damage to the rifle squad on retreat. Commando is out now for replay, probably for the bazookas and the versatility, uh, especially given both of his greyhounds were killed. And here come the AT guns. This 250 is almost certainly going to get knocked out. First shot, second shot, it's gone. Zooks from the commandos do it. The Salt Grenadier is going to be forced to back up as well. And they retreat. But Jeselin, in the heat of all of that, you know, he lost the 250, he lost his flak track, uh, he lost all of his Panzer Pioneers, but he has regained some map control, and the VPs are not too bad, 406 to 320. A lot of vehicle deaths, mostly light vehicles, uh, but still, you normally you see that the vehicles stay alive for a long time. The weasel must have gone down at some point. I, I missed it, I apologize. KD favoring Reekly, though. Now, here he comes out of his base again. Guastatori advancing. AT guns in the back, but they're not going to do anything in this engagement. Scouts take a lot of damage. Suppression from poured on them from two rifle squads. A third rifle squad here also activates it, whittling down this Guastatori squad. And see, now here's the risk. There are only two of them, so they both have uh, flamethrowers. Oh, the mine hits the lost three. Oh, they get chunked down, forced to retreat. The two-man squad, soft retreating here, trying to get back to the med truck. You got Panzer Jaegers forced to leave the church. Double AT gun, not able to get the shot off on the crowd sweeping. Oh, now the uh, register artillery coming in on the center VP. Rifles move out of the way. But at least Jeslin will hold that VP for now. Rostatory continue to solve retreat. Oh, the BIR done a lot of damage to that crowd shit then. Rostatory trying to use a sight blocker to get another model out without having to go all the way back to base. Assault Grenadiers advance out of the base and force off the rifle squad. Double AT guns in the center. Engineers laying mines counter capping on the north side for Reekly. Commandos capping on the south side. Those commandos are going to be a problem because... With Jeselin's vehicle heavy approach, they can just swap over to bazookas to handle any light vehicles. Here come Assault Grenadiers pushing on these rifles. At, at no vet, Assault Grenadier is not going to scale well against double vet rifles of BARs. Here come grenades, but relatively easily dodged. And now Assault Grenadier is at risk of going down on retreat. A grenade just off the retreat path. One model left. We're going to be supported by the Glossatory and Panzer Grenadiers and we'll get away. Now, 
engineers capping the fuel uh, cutoff on the east side of the map. Reefly floating a lot of manpower right now. Wow, Glossatory do a ton of damage to the scouts. Rifles forced to stay out of cover to prevent being, get, getting extra damage from the flamethrowers, and they're eventually forced to retreat. Commandos leave as well. Engineers taking a lot of damage from the crowd shoots in, and they retreat as soon as they decap. These two Glossatory squads are going to do a lot of damage if they can't be suppressed, and Reekly does not have uh, a weapon support center nor does he have you know the ability to create anything with suppression without that right no no machine guns he's got nothing in the battle group and the gloss is just gonna push right through the american infantry at this point engineers at risk of going down on retreat here oh but that last model would get away at guns back in the base all right and now that his uh, infantry are healed out Reekly's going to start re-pushing. And here we go, the first vehicle coming out. Gossatori laying mines in the rear. Using a smoke grenade to block sight lines for the American infantry. Yeah, this is smart. He's using a lot of sight blockers to keep the engagements at a range that is beneficial to the Gossatori. And now he's got him positioned here. Here we go. Flamethrower and SMGs. Grenade comes in, uh, but dodged by the Gossatori. They immediately hop back in the building. Panzer Grenadiers with their Vet 1 ability. And then Gossatori, rifle squad, forced to retreat. AT gun attacking the building here, trying to knock down the garrison. And I honestly like this for Reekly. I think the garrison helps Jezlin far more than it does him. Commando is moving up, and then Glossatory again going to challenge from the church. Briefly unlocking the Whizbang. Can't wait to see that come out. He changes the Sherman, and instead he's going to get a Sherman bulldozer out. And Jeslin will hold the center here uh, and begin reinforcing. He's got all three VPs at the moment, so even though he's behind, uh, he'll be able to flip that relatively quickly. Another rifle squad coming out for Reekly, which is interesting. Uh, I wonder what his thought process is there rather than doing commandos. He has the manpower uh, for both. And I think with a bulldozer, he'll have plenty of anti-infantry power. Uh, he's got it. Actually, he cancels that rifle squad. It goes for an AT gun. Three AT guns will allow him to kind of spread out and be prepared for whatever comes at him from the deck. Rod Houston only at half health. Get the rifles. Oh, they capped the point in retreat. I say if they pushed, they could do a lot of damage here. And now Reekly coming out with the bulldozer to challenge. He must have, I assume he's seen this mine. Bulldozer, great counter to the Glossatory. And Jeslin right now has nothing. He's got a, that can counter the bulldozer. He's got a P3 on the way, uh, which will win if he leaves the bulldozer in that fight. But he most likely won't. He's got a ton of health. Ooh, good attack ground on the retreat path. Does a lot of damage. Panzer Grenadier is also forced to retreat. They're going to eat some damage. Rifles push off the assault grenadiers in the middle. AT gun and Panzer Jaeger is supporting the middle VP though. That won't necessarily be enough to wipe out that bulldozer because Reekly is probably not going to let it get chunked down. Ooh, Panzer Grenadiers. <laughs> good, good attack round on the retreat path with this bulldozer. I think the bulldozer will survive an engagement against an AT gun and Panzer Jaegers because Reekly knows how to micro it. Uh, but it is enough to, to force it to think twice about that engagement. Now, Reekly's changed his mind again uh, and is getting another rifle squad out. Oh, an AT gun salvo knocks out the crotch shoots in, which is going to hurt more than you'd think because Jezlin needed that for capping power. P3 immediately chunked down by the double AT guns in the center. Panzer Jaegers get annihilated. And this Panzer III hits the field and immediately has to retreat for repairs. Now, Register Artillery coming in to defend the fuel point and also provide some cover. Guastatori are going to come back and repair this P3. Three AT guns. The Panzer III is not going to last long if all three can fire at the same time. 
Now, Jeslin's unlocked the 305 barrage. With these AT guns clumped up like this, if he can get them into a position where, like, they move up here and he calls it behind them and they're they're forced to back through that artillery, he could knock out a couple of those AT guns and do a lot of damage. Scouts countercapping. Reekly back with the VP lead, but still very, very tight despite the KD disparity. Bulldozer on the flank going to get repaired by these engineers. P3 going to challenge the scouts. Oh, infantry push to the center here. AT gun to defend against uh, vehicles. Grenades coming in. Decent dodge. Glossatory still getting really whittled down by these rifles and commandos. Good use of grenades. Ooh, Glossatory, don't lose any models, take a lot of damage. And Reekly able to push off this DAC infantry advance. Panzer Grenadiers need to retreat before they get beat up at range. Assault Grenadiers throw smoke to cover them, so... Uh, smart play by Jeslin to keep them on the field. Assault Grenadier is going to go around the side and try to close with the commandos here to get a better engagement. A second P3 hits the field. So, but with the triple vet riflemen supporting them, uh, yeah, Assault Grenadiers get forced off. Panzer Guns are going to continue to fight, but Jeslin is not going to be able to hold on to this. P3 coming up to support, but he's got to be careful of these triple AT guns. They all set up. First volley is going to come in here. Oh, man. And that P3 is immediately dead from the Sticky Bomb. Second P3 comes in. AT gun set up. It gets Sticky. One, two. One more shot, and it's done. And it will not be able to get away in time. Oof. That hurts. And that's it. With that, Jeslin's going to surrender. All right, everyone. We're back after that explosive ending. You know, I think even though Jeslin did a pretty good job of keeping the VPs close, uh, I agree. After losing both of those P3s, there's not really much he had uh, left available to him at that point. So, uh, as always, we'll start by kind of going over the, the build order here. Uh, so you have Jeslin playing as the DAC, Italian Infantry Battle Group. Starts with two Panzer Pioneers, gets a crowd and out, gets a 250 half-track, then gets a Panzer Grenadier, and then tacks into the Light Support Company. Uh, he selects the Italian Infantry Battle Group, he gets a Panzer Jaeger squad out, uh, and then he does the tier two tech, the fire support elements, which tell you he's probably going to go for flak for laying uh, or a pack through data and ISG. Uh, he gets a squad of Glossatori out, then he gets a flak for laying, and then he does the pack 38 call in with the half track. Uh, from there, he gets his med truck out, a second squad of Glossatori, and then later in the game, he'll end up getting the assault grenadier assault group that comes in the half track. Uh, so it's three total half tracks uh, he ends up building throughout the course of this game. Uh, and then finally, he builds his Panzer Army Command uh, and gets two P3s out. You'll note there aren't any armory upgrades uh, in this build order, and, and that's true. He didn't end up upgrading anything uh, from the DAC armory, which we'll talk about later. Then for Reekly, playing as a U.S. Special Operations Battle Group, obviously he starts with his scouts. Uh, chooses special operations, gets the weasel out right away, as well as an engineer squad to start capping. Then he builds his barracks, gets a couple rifle squads out, text grenades, gets a med tent down, uh, goes ISC, gets the captain, gets another rifle squad. Uh, and then he texts motor pool, and he ends up getting two Greyhounds out, uh, as well as a BAR upgrade and a couple of AT guns. Uh, then at this point, he goes for the advanced logistics. So obviously at 70 fuel, this delays his armor. For a little bit but at this point he's had enough of a resource advantage that i think it's a, it's a really smart choice uh he replaces his captain retinue which goes down to some glossatory uh gets a squad of ssf commandos out then goes for his tier four uh ends up deciding on a bulldozer sherman and then gets an additional rifle squad and an at gun out at the end of the game for a total of three at guns so first things first two really really high level players here and so I think like a lot of these matches, what it comes down to is who can actually have a couple of decisive engagements. Um, I, I'm going to start kind of my thoughts from Jeslin's point of view, right? Uh, as the guy who kind of lost, like I try to think about what could he have done differently uh, to win this match? Um, 
honestly, I like his thought. The vehicle heavy approach makes sense to me. Uh, you get some additional mobility. It helps you to mitigate your manpower losses. Uh, so you can start to get, you can either get more infantry out on the field, uh, or you can start to upgrade your units so they're more effective in combat. Uh, the biggest thing here that you want to highlight that take, takes your own play is you have to minimize the unnecessary losses. Uh, you know, a, something like a crowd shoots in will eventually go down. And he actually kept it alive for a really impressive amount of time. But losing the three half tracks uh, and then losing, he lost the flak filling probably a little earlier than I know he would have liked, especially with all the rifles on the field. For those three half tracks, uh, a couple of the engagements felt like he was unconcerned about that half track going down. And I think that took away from some some late game utility and also just kind of becomes a waste of resources at that point. It's like a, a squad wipe. Um, so unfortunate there. And I think if you if you are going to play really vehicle heavy, especially with the DAC, it's got to be clean. Uh, and so uh, really, really tight light vehicle play is important for them. Uh, the next thing, the Guasatori, I think were a great choice, especially two squads. They did a really good job of pushing against the USF infantry. The problem is they were almost always outnumbered. And this is where you benefit from the suppression. And so you saw when Jeselin had the flak filling on the field with the Guasatori, with the Panzer Jaegers, he was actually able to take control of the center of the map. And so it, that's like the best combination in my mind. You get a, a suppressing element, MG34, a flak filling, uh, to kind of lay down fire, either force uh, infantry units into cover or suppress them. And then you close with your close combat units. And that allows you to win the engagement, force retreats, and take the map control. Um, I like the flak filling suppression. I think it's really effective. Uh, there are a lot of sight blockers on this map, though. And so it can become tricky to maneuver the vehicle, tricky to prevent it from getting flanked or, or lined up. Um, and then also, sometimes you can really only suppress one squad at a time. You saw it a couple of times where Reekly's rifles were spread out just enough that the flak filling wasn't as effective as you would like. Now, I know the MG34 is the greatest machine gun uh, in the game, but I think maybe if, in, if instead of going fire support elements, if he goes for uh, the tier three, maybe a couple eight rods to do damage at range to the rifle squads with an MG34 in support instead might have been a decent analog. The risk there is that the martyrs are not going to be as good uh, against vehicles, again, with all the sight blockers, um, as maybe an AT gun would or the Panzer Jaegers. Uh, so it's a little bit of like a tricky build there. And then at that, at that point, you're hoping for P3. So I don't think it's necessarily like that's the answer. I just wonder if Jeslin had taken the other approach, if he might've had a little bit more success or maybe a second flak for Ling out so that he can move them around uh, and provide some additional suppression. Uh, I think I've been able to combine, uh, the flak for Ling with the Guastori, keep the flak for Ling on the field a little longer than... Uh, the triple AT gun set up at the end of the game would have been a lot less tenable uh, for Regley. I think to that point, it's very telling that he had no armory upgrades. Uh, he was suffering a lot of manpower bleed. He lost both of his Panzer Pioneers. He lost his Panzer Jaegers. The Assault Grenadiers late in the game with the call-in, I know what he's thinking. Like it, I understand that. Um, if you want to keep the half-track. But the half-track got thrown away almost immediately. Um, and he didn't get the half track upgrades. Then at that point, I think if you're not going to use the half track for like the mortar track, then a, a, honestly, a third squad of Guasatori is probably the answer against uh, the American rifleman. Um, but that manpower bleed kept him uh, from using any of his armory upgrades, right? So then um, the veteran squad leaders, even if you're not using Panzer Grenadiers, gives you an incoming damage reduction, which is super helpful. Uh, the vehicle repair, the smoke, the additional penetration, like all that uh, is not available to him because he's bleeding too much manpower to those upgrades. Uh, so that kind of tells you where he was at in terms of KD and you saw it uh, in the game. Uh, the last thing I, I thought, I was like, man, if he could keep these half tracks alive, he had three of them built, two of them basically for free with the, the call in. Uh, you get the upgrade, you turn them into mortar tracks. I think on this map, a couple of mortar tracks will actually do a lot to put pressure not just on the rifles in cover but on those AT guns. Um, three AT guns, you know, really relying a lot on team weapons for his AT. Uh, he didn't, he got a Sherman bulldozer out, but like he never had a chaffy. Both of his Greyhounds got knocked out, knocked out early. He didn't have a Hellcat. 
Uh, so those mortar tracks can end up being really, really effective, uh, especially when mass like that. So I think that's kind of the biggest thing uh, that I would say Jeselin missed. If he could have kept those half tracks alive, convert them into mortar tracks, uh, then I think you see uh, potentially some success there, uh, whittling down Reekley's really infantry heavy play. And then uh, for Reekley, obviously he won. The first thing that jumps out to me is like outstanding pressure from start to finish across the map. Uh, constantly forcing Jezelin to fight for his main fuel, leaving mines to kind of just whittle away at the manpower as uh, Jezelin tried to recap. Um, even with the like the decap of that fuel, he's cutting off all those other resources. Uh, and so Jezelin was constantly on the back foot from a tech uh, point of view, which led started to force him into the you know the infantry heavy style. So the Pack Thirty Eight, the couple of Glossatory squads. Uh, and it made it so he couldn't replace the vehicles that he lost, specifically the the flak frilling. So, really good work from Reekly there. Kind of just kind of relentless uh, pressure. I do want to highlight though, thought it was interesting. Outside of the weasel early, it was a relatively vanilla U.S. build, right? So you see, uh, you know, a lot of rifle squads with the captain. You get a couple of greyhounds out, and they really don't have the effect uh, that you would have liked from a couple of greyhounds. Then you know. Uh, the advanced logistics relatively early in the game probably helped him make up for those losses. And so he has the opposite problem from Jezelin. He's actually not taking a lot of manpower bleed. And so that ended up leading to the three AT guns, the manpower heavy stuff, uh, before he got the bulldozer out. Uh, really good use of grenades on this. So in my mind, uh, if you're trying to show how to use grenades effectively against a, a high level opponent that's good at dodging, uh, Reekly demonstrated this several times throughout the game. So uh, a couple times grenades on retreat paths, uh, grenades on advancing infantry like the Glossatory when they want to close the range with you, throwing the grenade kind of preemptively as they're moving up to cover to force them to continue to stand out in the open uh, helps you quite a bit. Um, so if, you, if you're playing someone and they're constantly dodging your grenades, like try to adjust how you use them uh, in line with what Reefly was doing, you'll get a little bit more bang for your buck. Uh, well, I, I really liked early the flank on the first half track that Jeslin got out, right? So it's it's diving deep to try to cut off uh, Reefly's fuel by his base. And so he has one rifle squad coming out of the base, pushing that half track into the second rifle squad that's, that's on the flank and in position to throw the sticky. Uh, and so he basically had him pinned down there there was no way for Jeslin to get that half track out and then ended up getting an early kill. And, you know, that's 250 manpower now gone for Jeslin. That's that's essentially, you know, another pioneer squad, almost a Panzer Grenadier squad. And you start to immediately feel that that lack of map presence. Um, the irony in this, I still remember the first time that I played Jeslin. He did more or less the same thing to me. He basically got me to overextend and then collapse the pocket and wiped three or four of my squads and the game was over. So. Uh, I guess uh, it can happen to anyone. Um, I will say, you know, obviously Reekly won here. Uh, I liked Jezelin's approach. I, you know, I think Reekly's counter was primarily pressure with rifles uh, and grenades. Uh, you didn't see a lot of vehicles to counter vehicles, and maybe it's because he didn't need them. But he got the kills that he needed uh, to maintain his composition advantage, which ultimately led uh, to the decisive engagement at the end of the game. Um, you know, normally with top 10 level players, you see a lot of infantry traded back and forth, but not so many vehicles. And to some extent, these guys still did a really good job. Like the weasel uh, was made it to vet two, the crotchets had made it to vet two before they both died. Uh, but a lot of vehicles went down in this game, which shows you kind of how aggressive uh, they were both being with their vehicle play. Uh, but at the, end, at the end of the day, uh, the, the trades went Reekly's way. Uh, and he ended up winning this one. So, uh, all right, guys, that's all I got for notes. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any other thoughts, I know there's, uh, I know there are people that are going to see things that I missed here. So, uh, appreciate any input. Um, and that's it. Uh, y'all have a good one.